day. I'm going to drink uh, some liquor. I'm going to eat a big steak and warm up. And then hit the treadmill. Hi, Dino Tripotis with Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. And yes, you can see the luxurious leather booth that I'm sitting in tonight. We leave the trappings of our studio and are coming to you from the Hyde Park on the Cap in the short north in Columbus, Ohio, where they are celebrating their grand reopening after 30 years of being a business, the Hyde Park on the Cap is one of the most beautiful restaurants in Columbus. And tonight, I'm told that there's also an addition to the restaurant that is a special rare whiskey vault that you know we're going to have to see and get into before it's all said and done. So, tonight on Whiskey Business, we celebrate the grand reopening of the Hyde Park Grill here on the Cap in the Short North. And we kick it off with a little bit of uh, Scotch whiskey. We'll be talking with Alistair from Dalmore Scotch Whiskey. This is a 12-year-old Scotch. Nice little departure from all the bourbons that we've been having. But Alistair will tell us more about that. Dave Powers, for those of you who live in Columbus, Ohio, that's the beautiful music you hear playing in the background. And we'll talk to some other people along the way as well. But a night of sophistication and, and class coming to you from three guys, Dino Tripotas, Greg Hansberry, and John Whitney, who have no sophistication in class. <laughs> so we're here with Alistair. What's your last name? Last name is Mingus. 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 And I detect a very strong accent. A wee brogue, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and you're here tonight for the grand reopening of the Hyde Park here on the Cap with uh, some Dalmore, and, and not just any Dalmore. This is a nice 12-year, right? This is the 12-year single malt. The single malt. Yep. So, so tell us a little bit about the bottle and what we're drinking tonight. Sure. So this is the 12-year, um, the Dalmore. Uh, the Dalmore's from the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, single malt Scotch whiskey. Um, the Dalmore's a very sumptuous and layered whiskey. Um, we do that by maturing in eggs bourbon casks, but then we move the whiskey on from there into all of those sherry casks. So we're adding layers of flavor and complexity to the whiskey. This is an unpeated single malt Scotch whiskey, so it's not smoky. So a lot of people find it very approachable. They love the chocolate and orange and coffee notes that it provides. We're finding it a nice departure because while we've had some scotches on whiskey business, we've had more bourbons than anything else. Of course. So uh, it was a it was a sharp right turn on that first sip, but man, it's really good. We find, we find a lot of American whiskey and bourbon drinkers do appreciate it because it's not too big a step. They're not jumping from bourbon to a very heavily smoky single malt scotch whiskey. So Nice. So you'll be here all night, right? All night. So we can come back for a second taste if we so desire. Absolutely. And a third if you want. Okay. Very good. I'll be here for the night. I appreciate the time, gentlemen. I appreciate the time as well. Thank you, sir. With me is Brandon Ford, who is the beverage manager. Is that the proper title? Beverage director of Hyde Park. Beverage director yes, of Hyde Park. That sounds far more official than yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Beverage director. And one of the things that Craig Dye, uh, our, our mutual friend, yes. was teasing me about is what is behind me and also <laughs> uh, on the other side to my right. The Whiskey Vault. Whiskies that are rare and hard to find. Yep. And as a result, need to be kept under lock and key. Of course, yeah. 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 So so tell us about wh whose idea was the Whiskey Vault? So uh, it was, it's was. it been something that we've been talking about for, for a while. Um, but it was a, a task when I first uh, joined the company about three years ago. I was tasked with making it happen. So... And what's your background in, in, in whiskey that you said, you know, we need a whiskey vault? Did you, were you sensing the explosion and the growth of whiskey and seeing where everything was going that Hyde Park needs to get a, a rare whiskey vault? So, so I was. Um, my background's in, in beverage. I'm an advanced sommelier. I've sat for the master sommelier. So everything beverage is my passion. Um, and just watching the bourbon boom, the scotch boom, and, and soon to be brandy and cognac boom. Um, oh, really? We're planning uh, ahead for actually. Oh, we're you, to get on you the see a brandy cognac I do. boom, do I you? I do. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. I do. 
Um, so we're, we're getting ahead of that, and we've, uh, for over the past three years, been acquiring some of the rarest product in the world, um, including Dalmore 45, only bottle uh, in Ohio, uh, one of four bottles in, uh, in the country, uh, Dalmore 40, only bottle in Ohio, Glen Park is 60, only uh, 250 bottles in the world, definitely the only bottle in Ohio, so... Um, that took me six months to acquire. Wow, and I see some of the ones that we're familiar with. We see the rhetoric. Uh, rhetoric the 20 or, year. Neither orphan barrel, the rhetoric. Mm -hmm. We see the, we see, the old Forester birthday bourbon. That's 2013 birthday bourbon. Which so. I, I, I should I should put mine under a locking key. There you go. I have some of the 2013 oh, birthday. Yes, I do at home, and also then of course the. Uh, the unicorn. Yeah, everybody's favorite. Pappy the Pappy Van, the Pappy Van Winkle 23. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The the ones that are always so hard to get, but man, some other ones as well. And some of them, I I hate to admit, some of them I I'm not familiar with. I don't know this one. So that's Johnny Walker, uh, John Walker and Sons Odyssey. It's their high end, high end, high end uh, blend of Scotch, uh, aged 30 plus years. Um, awesome, awesome, beautiful stuff. Um, up there we have Patron in the Leak, uh, Serie Number no. One, Extra Anejo Tequila. Only 500 bottles of that in the world. Um, hand blown crystal, Lalique crystal there. Um, just some some gorgeous products. And are these? I, I won't. I I don't want to ask what the what the pours are, but sure. these obviously would be a slightly pricier pour. Yeah, of course. So se. um so uh, the rare spirits for us, we start at nine dollars an ounce. Um, and it goes up to uh, like Glen Farkas, sixty years, a thousand dollars an ounce. A thousand dollars for an ounce. Correct. That and bottle is twenty thousand dollars, is what it. So it cost you twenty thousand dollars to get that bottle. Correct. So a thousand dollar. How many ounces in a bottle? Twenty five. Twenty five. So you're not really making I'm, that much. I am not. No. Yeah, that's not that much. Yeah. But, to, but to twenty twenty thousand dollars for a yeah. bottle. Huh? Four shots. Four, 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 shot, four <laughs> shots for me and Randy, yeah, <laughs> probably. I mean, we'll continue success with everything. This is beautiful. Thank you. The restaurant looks great. Thank you. Uh, it's the it's the grand reopening, and this is a beautiful place. And now with this, in addition to it, it's going to be a name maker. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, man. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, Dean Ashpotis, back with you once again on this very special edition of Whiskey Business as we're celebrating the grand reopening of Hyde Park on the Cap. And what I love about grand reopenings is that you never know who you're going to run into. Two legendary gentlemen sitting here as we speak. Skip Mossick right over there and Paul Keels, the voice and radio, with all due respect, that I said I would kill for. And that's a little extreme <laughs> because then what's the point if I kill somebody? Yeah, and I get the voice, then what? I'm in jail with this great voice. No, but I would seriously beat some up beat somebody up really bad to have your voice sir a, a pleasure we've met we've met before casually in passing but you're here tonight to celebrate the grand reopening and and how are you uh, good this is as you can imagine Dino a busy time of the year with football and basketball yeah going on at the same time but everything's good can't yeah. complain yeah got great Who would listen if I did yeah I, I would listen to you as they say read read the phone book or whatever the case might be yeah tough uh, close game last for it seemed like they basketball Last night for a little bit. Well, it was a, Chris Holtman referred to it as a rock fight. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what Cincinnati does and has for the last 30 years. Cincinnati's my hometown, so I've been familiar so with yeah, what the Bearcats I, I, have done. So you've been a little... Yeah, been yeah, a little jaded by it all. By but it but, all. but a great, great win to start a season in a year which they've got a really tough non-conference schedule. Mm -hmm. And then we got the Buckeyes coming up on Saturday. And then two, well, we got two... Two relatively, supposedly easy games, but hell, you never know, right? You remember Maryland last yes, year? Yes, I do remember Maryland <laughs> last year. Skip remember. I, 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 I Over time, but lucky to escape. Lucky yes. to escape. But this team seems a little different. Very. It's a team that is seemingly very close together. They've really cleaned up some of the things on defense. There were issues last year, Dino. Mm -hmm. um, they've not only won by convincing margins over everybody they've played, but they've been incredibly consistent, both on offense and defense and special teams. Uh, there were a lot of questions. Nobody, you knew they'd be good. You didn't know how good with a yeah. new head coach and a new quarterback. But it's uh, is, is Skip and I and the guys we work with have watched it every Saturday. It's been amazing to see it. And, and I don't want to make this all about sports. What I really want to ask you, and, and, and but I had to because, duh, you sit down with Paul and Skip and you don't talk Buckeyes for a second, you, you're, you're an idiot. 
But um, in this type of atmosphere that we're in right now, you got the nice jacket on, you got the nice little handkerchief right there. I'm sure you frequent Hyde Park on a regular basis. You know, we have a podcast called Whiskey Business, a podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. We've sampled over 107 bottles on the show thus far. So are you a whiskey drinker per se? I am not. I'm a beer and wine drinker. Beer and wine drinker. That's where your tastes run to. Yes. Uh, For whatever reason, uh, whiskey and, and hard liquor never really made the ingredients. But uh, more than make up for it with the other ones. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, the great thing, Dino, is I've got a great appreciation. I've got a neighbor who is a bourbon collector. So I've watched him assemble his collection, watched his wife watch him assemble his collection. And how is the wife with him uh, the assembling? The wife, is, his, so far, she's been so, pretty so, good. So good. But, but what he's done and what I've learned from him um, is there's a lot of exchanging going on now. He and his wife have gone to the bourbon trail in Kentucky, accumulated mm-hmm a wide variety of stuff, and he's traded with people to get brands that he's not had. So learning from other people, uh, I've learned some about some of it from Skip because uh, he, he is a, I'm not, I'm not a good, Skip, I'm you're not the a collector, you're, I'm the sponge. You're, are, you the, are you the whiskey drinker? Yeah, the bourbon. Oh, bourbon. bourbon. What's your favorite bourbon, Skip? The, the, the kind, I, I know the, it's like picking the, a favorite child. The kind that I don't have to buy. It's always my favorite. <laughs> Come on. If it's but, free, it's for me. But but seriously, there's probably one. Everybody's got a go-to. Wood, wood, it, for, it, Woodford's a bad. Woodford? I mean, that, that, Woodford's that's, good. Yeah, it's, nice it's brown foreman product. I'm in radio. I can't go much more than that. That's it's. radio, right? <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't have as much saved after 24 years. That, that, Paul as, knows as, I've drank a lot I, lower than that, a lot lower shelf in hey, the past. Hey, there's a lot of good whiskeys that are on the bottom yes, shelf. Yeah. The bottom shelf gets a bad rap. Now, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't understand this no, because you don't drink whiskey, but you'll back yeah. me up. Yes. The bottom shelf gets a bad rap. There's some really good whiskeys on the bottom shelf. But if you see dust, you should probably avoid. Uh, well, sometimes <laughs> sometimes if you blow off the dust, you find a nice, <laughs> nice surprise. Nice surprise. Well, gentlemen, I just want to say thank you for spending a little time with us tonight. What a treat. It's, Very it's much great. So. Very much um, it's, uh, it's, it's, you guys do a great job with everything that you do over the years and continue to do so. I just don't understand. I, don't, I can't imagine listening to Buckeye Sports. Without hearing, without hearing, without, 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 without hearing those voices, awesome. yeah, 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 yeah. So well, that just means we've been doing it for a long time. That's a why long Dino. Time. <laughs> long time. What was the very first gig you had? Just out of curiosity. Oh my goodness! If you, can, you, can you go back that far? Yes. Um, can you remember? I can. I started in 1979. And was it always this? I don't because your own voice doesn't sound the same to yourself. So right. I don't know. But I started as a news reporter in Cincinnati. Uh, working at night, going to city council meetings, uh, hiding up in trees during hostage situations, calling in live reports. Um, I, and Skip has heard this story many years ago. Um, during the Who concert in Cincinnati, I got oh, called in one. when all of that happened. Oh, wow. Uh, in December of 79. Um, and pretty much through the whole night was doing stuff, chasing interviews. And the next morning, I got sent to the hotel where the band was staying, which at that time was called the Stofers in downtown Cincinnati, camping out. Um, Before my first job in radio, I worked in a hotel. Ran into one of the young ladies who had been a maid at the hotel that I worked at. She was at the Stouffer's and uh, started talking. She says, well, you know the who? They're staying up on floor such and such. So I went up with one other radio guy, knocked on the door trying to get an interview. Manager came out. He says, well, I don't know. Let me see. Roger Daltrey walked out. And this guy and I snagged about a few minutes with Roger Daltrey talking about the who tragedy where 11 people died. Amazing. It was. It and was, then it you was were dumb off, luck. And then, and then off and running from there. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You just never know when it's going to happen, right? You don't know. You yeah. don't know. Well, God bless you, man. And continued success with everything. And thank well, you, thank like and I said. And to you, too. Oh, and to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to get up at 3 a.m. to do a podcast. I, uh, sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes, <laughs> you being a whiskey drinker, sometimes I didn't go to bed till 3 a.m. And j- it, just, it just stayed up. I it went to work. I didn't well, getting- know. <laughs> Or you're getting up at uh, 3 a.m. for other things. For other things, Like to go down the hall. We are are at that age as well, for sure. All right. So I think we've covered it all. Sports, sports, career, and and, and the prostate. (laughs) (laughs) Which can mean a lot of things. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And here we are still at the grand reopening of the Hyde Park on the cap of the short north. And you never know what you're going to get in the grand reopening, including the Ohio State University Alumni Band!
as the grand reopening of the Hyde Park on the cap, as they say. The cap. The cap in the short north. I'm not surprised that part of the grand reopening celebration would include the premier keyboardist in Columbus, not in Columbus, Ohio. Hell, maybe in the country. Wow. Dave Powers. Hey, Dino. Dave Powers, man. Thank you. You haven't been on Whiskey Business with us since the early days of Whiskey <laughs> Business in our very first year. Yes, I'm due for another episode. You are. Back at my house. And for more whiskey. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, really? Have you started to drink more whiskey since we last spoke? Because yes. you imbibed a little bit. But I, you, I you, imbibe you... a lot more now. I mean, really? well, I'm like a Woodford guy. Woodford's but I good. tried uh, Old Forester. I really like Old Forester. They've been using it tonight. I've been having a Sazerac. They got the Old Forester single barrel back there. Yeah, it's a barrel nice. selection that Hyde Park went and picked themselves. Wow. And they did a fine job. Yes. And the Woodford that you love so well. And the yes. Old Forester that you that you tried tonight and enjoyed. Yes. Yes. All come from the same whiskey family, Brown Foreman. No wonder it's so good. Yeah, so they know what they're doing. They Shucks. they know which ones to get involved in. Yeah, man. And, and, and make good. So you enjoying the night? I'm enjoying the night. I enjoy uh, working because I'm a workaholic. Right. So uh, I'm glad that they called me uh, Craig from Hyde Park. I, I'm at Hyde Park on Henderson Road on Fridays normally. So he just called me, and I said, sure. So sure, I not? got out of my normal Thursday gig. Oh, so gig. you had a normal Thursday night gig that you got out of. I skipped out of it. To are, do they, this. are they disappointed? They I, probably have to I be. I would not know. I would not know. If I kind of call my own shots, <laughs> and life is good that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you told me this. On, I'm sure you told me this on the very first podcast we did together. But how many nights out of the year do you think you 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 do this, on average? Well, let's see. There's 365 days a year, and yeah. I'd say it's probably about 350 days a year. Wow. I mean, I don't know. You just you, you just do what you do. You love okay. what you is do. Is it possible for you to even take like a real vacation like go someplace for like 10 days and not do any gigging whatsoever i still have to do like maybe an hour or two somewhere uh every other year louis chamus is a drummer and i we go to a place in tecate baja california mexico called rancho la puerta and we're there for two solid weeks with our significant better half yes and all we do each week we do a one-hour program on Tuesday and a one-hour program on Thursday, and then we repeat it the following week. Rinse and repeat. And, and every morning, we hike the mountains before breakfast. And is, do, those, we hang. do those four gigs pay for the trip? Well, uh, here's uh, how this works. Is that how, is that, is that how that happens? Here's how it works. It's about $6,000 per person a week to stay there. Wow. We stay for free. <laughs> so this is how you make things work. Way, yeah. We pay for our own plane flight. Okay. We don't get paid. All right. But everything's included as far as we you're, have our yeah, own I, villa. We getting, have our own food. You're kind of getting paid. That's you, You're kind of getting paid. There you go. And yeah. we hang out with people. So yeah. we want to, you know, we spend some time with the people that are staying every week. And, and then that's the, it. Those, those four performances, those four hours, keep you from, from jonesing. From not doing a gig, I, so get, I it's, guess it's, so. It's, it's, you mean you guess so? Well, it's, it's your for, not, not to put it in heroin terms, right? Right? But right? It's, right, it's right. your fix. It's our fix. <laughs> it's your fix. But it's for only week. for you know <laughs> an hour on Tuesday yeah. and an hour on Thursday, and we do it again. So we do things like that. That's what makes things work. And what makes things work for for me is I can't afford to retire. Musicians never retire. We keep playing till our fingers fall off. Right. That's the way it goes. So. What we do with this Florida thing is we're in Florida once a month. We're called commuters. We, I drive twice a year. I fly. And I work almost every night in Florida. But we hang out in the daytime. So it's enabled for my wife and I to spend quality time together during nice. the day. And at night, I do what I'm addicted to. I got to play. And we have fun. And, and that's, I don't know. We're making life work on our terms. And you, 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 you and can't get any isn't, better than isn't, that. Isn't that the definition of success Until when you I, make life work <laughs> out on your own terms i guess so yes i just need someone to start schlepping my gear for me yeah probably you know yeah like there's a guy in columbus you and i know who he is dear friend he pays someone to set up and tear down his stuff and he shows up about three minutes before his gig <laughs> we, i think he's coming back on the podcast as well yes of course year. of course <laughs> i mean now now granted i don't know how much 
a steady gig pays for him, <laughs> but he's got to at least drop at least you know another fifty to seventy five large to Prob- this guy, probably who worth- hangs out all night to make sure that he sounds good and everything. And God love him because he's pro- a dear friend. Probably worth every penny to I him. I love him. Yeah. I, you know, that what that's what he's doing to ensure his quality of life. Uh, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay the extra seventy five dollars. That's there my you imp- go. that's my impression of him, by the way. <laughs> Oh, the I'll, pay, oh, I'll pay the rent is $75. No problem. It'd be like, <laughs> right. Okay. It's like that. For the man who will go unspoken in name. He's our uh, resident Ozzy Osbourne, uh, but I love him. I just love him. The death, you know. Uh, but a sober, uh, for the most part, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, you know. for the most part. Yeah, because he doesn't drink while he's performing. No, he, he doesn't. Just, uh, but, bef- yeah. but after. But, uh, yeah. but after, I'll have but a, Put I'll a have lid him. on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right. No, no. Put a lid on the bottle. Not you. Not you. Put a lid on the bottle because after, he's going to finish it. You yeah. know it. Mm-hmm. You know it. Well, I know you got to get back to entertaining the people here, so I just want to say thank you for spending some time with us. It was a treat oh. to walk in the door and see you doing your thing Likewise. at the keyboard, It was man. a treat to see you and the posse, and wow, this is just what an extra added honor to even talk a little bit on the podcast. And, and you'll I- come back on just just uh, face-to-face? I'll make sure we have some Woodford for you. There's some Heck Wood- yeah, sure. Uh, Bring I, it I on. I promise you that. I'll have Woodford. Bring it can, on, or we're all just willing to try. I'll try whatever you have, whatever you, you no, have. No, you, you mentioned know. a favorite. We can accommodate you. It's no problem. We it's can all accommodate you. good. We can accommodate hey, you. Hey, and I'm also glad, too, not just give a, a plug, but I'm glad that you got to talk to Paul Keels and Skip Mossick yeah, tonight. Yeah, that was a treat in its own right I was there, so man. excited. I mean, I'm I like, saw him sitting there, and I'm going like, that's. I've met Paul, you know, in passing, but to be able to sit down with him. Isn't it amazing as an adult? I'm 60 years old and I'm getting excited about yeah, sitting down to talk me too. with Paul Keels, the voice of the Buckeyes. Shoot, and when I heard him one night at, at the, the other Hyde Park on Henderson, he was sitting there and I heard this guy talk. I'm like, I know that voice. You I know, know that, that voice. voice. I'm like, holy it's cats, magic. check this dude out. Yeah. It's magic. I wish, I wish that I had something on him that I could say, uh, I need you to record a bedtime story for me <laughs> that I can play when I can't fall asleep or else I'll release this tape. You know, <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm not going to make any crazy demand. I would just just read this story. He could to recite me. the dictionary and, and it would yeah, sound and, good. And, and, and uh, lull me to sleep at night. I mean, Absolutely. he's got that kind of voice and a, and, a great, and a great broadcaster Fantastic. as well. But the voice... Unbelievable. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sam. I am. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Paul, give me a little green eggs and ham, why don't you? Uh, I, I will not. Will not. In a box. <laughs> See, I've always wanted to sound like Barry White, too, and I, I can't. We were listening to Barry White tenor. on the way down. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, uh-huh. That voice. Yeah. Well, I'm a wall, tenor. It doesn't work for me. Love. It's too high up. I know. It's crazy. Beautiful stuff. Five well, in the morning, though. Honey. Honey, don't do well, that. I've already made some mental notes as to what we're going to talk about when you sit down with us in 2020 on the podcast. I've already, there's been a couple things you said tonight that I did not comment on that I'm going to seize upon when I see you next because that's how my brain works. So, sure. Stream of consciousness. Stream you write of consciousness. Some notes. I made some mental notes. I got that's some it. questions for Dave Powers that will pop up in 2020. He'll join us in whiskey business in the new year. In the Fantastic. meantime, brother, great to see you. Great to see have you, Have a great holiday. You. You, have, you too have, have a great Thanksgiving, holiday. Merry Christmas, and all the fun stuff that goes with and it. And you as well, my friend. And I'll see you in 2020. So as the Whiskey Business Podcast road trip continues here at the Hyde Park on the Cap and their grand reopening, you got to keep walking down the hallway and you'll discover other things that you didn't even know existed, like back here with Todd Adam, who's back here uh, making amazing drinks. We'll explain this contraption here in just a second. But first, I was just like, my heart skipped a beat when I saw these great bottles sitting here that are actual Hyde Park barrel selections, correct? That is correct. We actually purchase single barrels from the distilleries. I I don't want to step on your toes, but while you're making uh, Hansberry here, something fancy and that, what is this contraption for? Now, this actually, this is going to be a smoking box. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as a smoking box, it attaches to a smoking gun. Um, The best thing about this smoking gun, you know, this will run you usually roughly about $100 to $200. um, uh, is Is usually the price you see them going on the market. Um, it's just going to have a little uh, part where you put in the wood, and then it has a fan behind it that is actually going to start. Um, when you start the fan, it'll take the flame straight in. And if you see, as I light it, 
it takes it right in. It'll keep on smoking as well. So you can put the lighter down, and you'll see the, the box will fill with smoke. Mm -hmm. um, once you get it to a good point, you can turn it off, let it go. And this um, seems to be one of the newer things in craft cocktailing that, that, that's popped up here in, 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 as of recent. And what is the appeal? What is the draw? What, is, what makes the drink different or special as a result of this process? Well, the good thing is, you know, usually when you look at a lot of your spirits that have that wood aging to it, smoking a smoky flavor can enhance it. Um, you have a couple different woods out there that you'll find. You'll find hickory, you'll find cedar a lot of the times, applewood, cherrywood, mesquite. Each one will give its own flavor. Like usually if you use something like hickory, they're going to say that that's going to impart a little bit almost like a bacon flavor too. Gotcha. to to the pro, uh, product. We're using applewood. Nice. Applewood isn't going to be necessarily as spicy as cedar, but it will give the drink a little nice spice. And the one thing that we do know about eating and drinking is that a good portion of it does come from your sense of smell. So really necessarily it's not going to be totally in the drink, but you're going to get that smell off of it, which is 50% of really taste. Well, like I said, I don't want to step on your toes, but if you could pour me another Old Forester on the rocks and then make Hansberry his cocktail, we'll be out of your hair. Hey, sounds perfect right, to me. All right, good. All right, uh, so. All right, yeah, so yeah, let's I'll, go. No, I actually want. We're going to tape you making a cocktail, but but I, I selfishly want my drink first while I'm watching. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong All with right, that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the ice in. All right. All right. I'm gonna help you out here a little bit. Not that you need help. How long have you been a bartender? Uh, roughly about 20 years now. Wow. So that um, is your chosen profession. Yes. My degree is actually in finance, but... Uh, eh, finance, finance. You know? Right. That's I'll be good. honest. I, f I, fell in love with it, I fell in love with it while actually getting the degree and uh, came to a point where I was like, guess what? Hey, I love it. This is I the quality it. of life I want right a here. Exactly. Love what you do, do what you love. That's All right. right. I'm going to... Uh, you can't make it and hold the microphone at the That's same time, right? right? So, Hansberry, take that microphone back, and I will just go ahead and watch while Todd creates magic here at the Hyde Park on the cap. What are you pouring in there? What is this that? Right here, this is going to be an agave syrup. Um, as far as agave syrup, this is going to be our sweetening agent that we're going to be using with it. Um, after that, I'm going to be actually using an Earl Grey Bitters. This is from 1821 Bitters. Fantastic, fantastic company. The same people that make the tea? They, I, I believe so. I believe so. Now, do about four to five dashes there for you. Um, now, sir, we're going to be using the Woodford, uh, correct? Or are you doing the Old Forester? We're going to be using the Old Forester. All right. I may have influenced them a little bit on that. I will admit. They, I, so all of them are beautiful products. There's not a loser in this one. It's winning, winning, and more winning. All right. Now, we're going to stir for a quick moment. After that, I'm going to grab one of these rocks glasses. Pardon me. Don't want to get too close there. We stir, we don't shake. What's the difference? Well, usually the difference is a stir is going to impart less water into the drink. If you do a shake, you'll actually, um, uh, it, it'll just add more water to the drink. Um, All right. You're doing that, and then we go, and and then we go, then we go into the. Uh, then we go into the box. Now the magic trick begins. Smoke and mirrors. Don't don't try this at home unless you have one at home. Then try it at home. And people can buy these and have them in their homes, right? Those who are really into craft cocktailing. And oh, 100 percent. I, I I smoke a lot of things at my house. I bet you do. <laughs> I use it in cooking as well. It actually works very well in cooking. Oh, really? Usually you want things that are going to have a little bit more of a water weight to them. Um, like it re works really well with onions, works great in, with salad, any kind of spinach, things like that. Um, but, yeah, usually uh, I use it in a couple different uh, uh, home recipes that I do at home. So, And you'll see, you know, the, the, the box is filling with smoke. It's going to impart that flavor there. Again, we're using apple wood. And then I'm going to shut it off at that point. Okay, so it's, it's a little time-consuming to make a cocktail like this. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I, I would say it's worth the time. It's worth the wait, you know. I mean, if, if you... You can't rush perfection. Ah, well said, my friend. Well said. Well said, indeed. 
So how much longer does it sit in there by its, after you turn everything off? And I just... will tell you this. At this point now, um, we are definitely ready to open the other side. All right. And, and where it becomes a magic trick, wow. where it becomes a magic trick is that Greg Hansberry will make it amazingly disappear in a short amount of time. All right. I T love it. Todd, love thank it. you, man, so much. It was a pleasure. Uh, our pleasure. pleasure. Thank friend. you, my friend. Continue, right. Continued success. All good road trips, my friends, must come to an end at some point. But they start with invitations. And sitting next to me is the regional manager for all of the Hyde Parks that you may visit across the country, especially here in Ohio. And my longtime friend for how many years? Put that microphone. We've been right together. Uh, we've been together. the early nineties. We've been together. We've been together a long time. We've been together. It sounds. We've been together. We've been together since the early nineties. It has been sweet. Craig Dye, uh, who, who gave us the invite tonight. Congratulations on a spectacular Thank grand you. reopening. Thank you. I, I think everybody in this in this joint is buzzing and and saying what a great night it was. Well, we've been excited. We've been uh, planning this for a long time, a mm -hmm. long time, and. Um, you know, you look at designs and you look at things you want to do and you look at beverage programs and you look at food programs and uh, it all just kind of came together and uh, it's a lot of planning and obviously the place looks amazing. It does. How much, as a, as a regional manager, how, how much influence did you have, how much hand did you have in this game? It's the greatest company to work for because everyone has a say and, uh, you know, we all sit around a table and we like this, we don't like that, hey, right. I forgot about this, hey, I forgot about that. Um, hey, this might look great here, or I don't like this. Can we look at something else? And um, so it's pretty much unanimous, which is why it takes so long. Yeah, because yeah. we all have opinions. Yeah, and, and and all the all the opinions are respected. They're respected, and nice. then of course at the end of the day, there's there's the big guys. Any, anybody, and they make the they make the final call. I understand that. You're one of the big guys. You're I'm one of the big the guys. Guy. You're one of the big guys. Maybe girth. Yeah, you're one of the big guys. Maybe <laughs> Maybe one of the, I want to say you're one of the big guys. I don't know about I'm gonna that. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because that's how I want to think about it in my head. I would like, you to, I would like you to remember me as, as, as such. As, as one of the big guys. <laughs> but anybody that got invited to this tonight was like a kid in the candy store. I mean, from the hors d'oeuvres to the cocktails, uh, you had scotch, uh, Dalmore up front, 12-year Dalmore. You had all your single barrel selections in another room, the old Forster, the Stranahan's. The Woodford Double Oak Single Barrel. We talked to Todd. We, we talked to, 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 to Brandon, Brandon about the, the the barrel selections. Found out that he goes on like seven trips a year to yeah. make barrel selections. Yeah. That's a whiskey drinker's dream come you know, true. And Brandon's brought, brought to the next level. We used to go once a year and, and, and pick out a barrel. And, they, and, and Woodford's always so great to us. And they'd sit us down and let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. And we tried that, and all of a sudden you're stumbling out of Woodford, thinking, "Stumbling out, what the hell did I just drink?" Stumbling out instead you're stumbling of out, uh, stumbling out of Woodford. Stumbling in. But uh, they treat us great, and uh, we're lucky to be partners with them. And I, I mean, we're just lucky to be in the business we are. We get to play around with all this, this great, uh, these great spirits, and and everyone here tonight has had such a great time. They did. The uh, we did. I know we. Did. I know you guys did. I appreciate you guys coming out and just seeing the, the the, the reaction to a lot of the. Uh, the guests that haven't been here in a little bit or ha just haven't seen the new face. I mean, just look at the bonus points for us, you know, selfishly speaking. We got the OSU alumni band. Band, yes. But, and then I got to sit down with Paul Keels. Right. And, and a legend a legend in broadcasting, especially sports broadcasting. Yeah. And I was like a little kid in a, in a candy store. So I, I felt like I felt like Chris Farley on that SNL episode when he's when when do you remember when he's interviewing Paul McCartney? He goes, "Remember that one song you did with the Beatles? Yeah, that was cool." <laughs> <laughs> I heard him. I, heard, I was halfway to the dining room when I heard his voice. Yeah. Uh, this is Paul. You Keels. can't. It's checking in. I'm the voice of the Buckeyes. I'm checking in, brother. I'm, I'm so I'm so happy for you and proud of you and and uh, I sincerely. Love the fact that I can call you my friend, and and and, and obviously ditto. Uh, you know, we've been I, trying I to, we, your friendship. We've been for trying so many to catch years. up here in the last couple of years. We we kind of not on purpose, but right. we got busy. Our yeah. lives went in separate they, directions, they but we seem to be coming back again. And what I loved about us getting back together is that we just literally picked up where we left off, which is the sign of a true friendship. We did. We picked up where we left off over a small glass of pappy. Yep. Yep. We did. We and did. Then, uh, that was in over. my house, it was not from house. Hyde Park. No, nope. I, I, I was in my house. That was on the house. Yeah, it was on the house. So I appreciate that. That was a great time. I love you, brother. Hey, good love luck. You too. Continue success. Appreciate it. All right, and 
On that note, my friends, we hope you enjoyed this little road trip for whiskey business at the grand reopening of Hyde Park on the Cap in Columbus, Ohio, in the beautiful short north. And until the next bottle, see ya.